Wait, no, wait. <clears throat> Hold on, wait, wait, one minute, wait. Go. Get this. Yeah. Ugh. Hello everybody, and welcome to another hobby cheating video. And today we're going to talk about my newest obsession, my favorite primer, the only thing I prime with. We're going to talk about something a little different. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So recently on the advice of one Mr. John Ninus, Nin John as he's more commonly known, I picked up a new primer. Specifically, I picked up this Mr. Hobby 1500. It's this right here. And it's really great. Now, I'm going to talk to you in this video about why I like it, how to use it, and so on. The Mr. Hobby 1500 Black, and they do make it in a couple different colors, is obviously well known in the scale modeling community for years. Mr. Hobby is generally a little harder to get over here in the States, but it's certainly available from places like Amazon and local retailers who focus more on scale model stuff. So, why do I like it? Well, put simply, I've always had a bit of a challenge with acrylic primers. They tend to gunk up your airbrush, they tend to often be cloggy in there, and sometimes they can kind of build up or obscure your details unless you're very, very careful and prime very, very slowly and carefully and lightly. They also have a durability problem to a degree. I know many people have reported to me that when using acrylic primers, even ones I've used for years without issues, that they find the paint scratches off or removes or doesn't really properly cure. Oftentimes this can be due to humidity or other conditions in the area that make things a little challenging. Now, fortunately enough, uh, this primer suffers from none of that. The Mr. Hobby 1500 here is uh, an enamel-based primer. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means it's going to be a heck of a lot more durable. Uh, it is rock solid once it goes on. It applies it super thin, it goes on super thin, and yet has this incredibly tough eggshell, candy shell like coating. It's hard to explain, you'll see later in the video. But you, but it is toxic, hence the joke of beginning wearing the, the, the mask. So let's talk about what all we need to do to use this primer. So first of all, this Mr. Hobby 1500 uh, can't be used straight. You've got to get a little bit of the uh, leveling thinner, this color, Mr. Color Leveler uh, 400. And you generally want to uh, then have the airbrush fill it almost a one-to-one -one ratio. Generally, I go like one drop less of the uh, 400 thinner to the 1500 primer. So for example, if I want to use 12 drops of primer, I use 11 drops of the uh, the uh, the 400 Mr. Thinner, or the Thinner. Now, <clears throat> what I found is then you mix it back up and you get an incredibly smooth, efficient, fast flowing prime, no clogs, no muss, no fuss. Uh, however, this stuff is flammable, it is toxic, and that's one of the things to say here. Every single part of this process when you're using this primer is toxic. All of it, from beginning to end. And it's flammable, you do not want to inhale the fumes, so you either want to be using this in a room that is well ventilated, that has a filter running, that has air exchange, and you want to have a mask on. Like, you want all of that to be true, okay? Uh, and so don't just spray this in a closed room without a mask. It's not good for you. It's very toxic. But when used safely and under those conditions, it's perfectly fine. It's nothing going to hurt you. It's a lot more dangerous to just walk outside and breathe air in some cities in the world. Um, but with the proper precautions, you're good to go. So we load up our airbrush. In this case, uh, I'm going to be doing some rat ogres. Uh, these are out of the new Skaven Tide box set. Got to keep on with the painting. So I'm going to be painting or priming up these Skaven today so you can see them. They're nice big minis with a lot of detail. So we'll really be able to see how it tackles that fine detail. And uh, I loaded up with 11 drops of thinner to basically 12 drops of paint. Backflow a little, and let's get to priming. Now, I'm going to prime over here in my airbrush booth. I need that because I need somewhere to contain and control and blow the fumes and such. Um, so I apologize for the different lighting. This is just the way it is. I don't have the same lighting setup over by my airbrush booth, so I'm sorry. 
But as you can see, I just apply it in one simple pass, giving it a nice spray everywhere. This not only self-levels in an incredibly effective way, but it also dries very, very thin. This simply does not obscure details unless you just absolutely bathe it and dump it on it. In applying this as I normally would, going pretty hard on the trigger, I have never had any issues with this obscuring detail. I work my way around the mini, applying a nice even coat of it. Uh, once I see it's done, I just set it to the side. I do go ahead and work through the other two rat ogres as well. You know, just get them primed up. Why not? I might as well do the whole unit here. Um, I've got enough primer in the clip to do this, so let's get after it. And, you know, a couple times you'll see me, like, I grab some of the other models and find a spot that I didn't quite actually, you know, cover correctly and just give it a nice even prime. Uh, you don't really have to apply two coats. You can if you want, but you don't really need to. I really only use one coat of this at a time, and it is rock solid. So, once it's all primed, I let it sit for 15 minutes, okay? That's the amount of time I let this cure for, 15 minutes. I popped on a little podcast, set my phone up, answered some emails, and waited 15 minutes. When my alarm went off, I grabbed the figs, turned the camera back on, and that's what you're looking at right now. After 15 minutes of curing time, this stuff is solid and ready to be painted on. No issues whatsoever. Uh, now, I did have this under my lights, and I am in a very low humidity uh, basement, so maybe there'd be some slight variance in that time. Okay, I, don't, I haven't tested this under every scientific condition. But the point is, is that, you know, so maybe it needs a few more minutes if you're in a very humid area or something like that. But regardless... You can see as I touch it, you know, run my finger over it, tap at it, do all these different things, nothing. No effect, no scratches, no movement of the primer. And also you can see how it has this nice shine to it. One of the things I actually really like about this primer is that it has a bit of a satin quality, but paint still sticks to it really well. It's toothy, even though it has that satin shine. Which is nice, because I often paint over black, especially for display for uh, display pieces. And this really does give me uh, a better way to see the volumes. Because the primer is kind of shiny, I can actually still see what I'm doing. When something is too matte and too black in your prime, it becomes really easy to actually lose sight of what you're even painting. It's hard to pick out the detail. Um, this is shiny enough you can still see it and paint over it. Most of the recent display pieces that I have worked on have been done in this particular primer, and I found no issue under my painting light being able to see, distinguish, and paint the various elements of the figure. Now, that being said, I'm not painting over black for my army. Um, this is an army project, and it has a standard Zenithal-type lighting. So, again, we're maybe like at this point 20 minutes after priming. Let's see how uh, another paint goes over top. So here I grab my Pro Acryl Ivory, which is just my sort of simple Zenithal highlight color I use for my figures in this army, and load it up in the airbrush, and we give it a nice little coat. As you can see here, uh, that ivory lays down over that nice, smooth, solid, easy. I end up going ahead and priming all three of these figures. I am working with the airbrush again very lightly, just slowly building this up. Because we're back to acrylic paint, I am very careful in how I apply this. Uh, so I'm working for all everything here at about 20 PSI, 18 to 20 PSI. It's not an exact science, but it's somewhere in that range. And I just slowly build up that white, is focusing on the higher areas to get a nice clean zenithal over the top of these guys. They're a little challenging because they're very hunched. Hunched figures are always a bit of a pickle because they're so leaning forward that they want to like... Um, they kind of, it's hard to get a proper zenith on their chest, but I do spray down there a little, again, just to give my old and tired eyes even more of a break to let me easily see the details and stuff like that. But I want to make sure this paint doesn't get too liquidy or run anywhere or build up in recesses, which is then going to give me more of a headache later. So as I build it up over the three miniatures, uh, I'm then ready to go. You can see that's how they came out right there. Now, once that's done, I gave these guys, oh, I don't know, let's say five minutes if that's probably being generous because I wanted to see how does this all hold up now. Acrylic paint, obviously, especially when blasted through an airbrush, famously dries pretty fast. 
but it is pretty thin. But if we've got a nice toothy paint, toothy primer I should say, it should hold that paint in place really well. And sure enough, as I'm holding it, moving the figs around, running my fingers over them, stuff like that, nothing came off. Now I'm sure if I got my fingernail reel in there and started like scraping against it or got a metal tool, I could get paint off, but yeah, I would hope so. It's not that strong, right? Uh, I'm not painting them in concrete, for goodness sakes. Um, but all in all, I got a really nice prime out of this without any kind of issue at all. Uh, and I think these guys look really good. And again, all of that detail on here was just 100% perfectly preserved, ready for painting. So, in summary, why I really like this, uh, this sort of Mr. Hobby is because of how strong it primes, how clean it primes, and how uh, easy it is to work through your airbrush. But we're not done yet. Because with the Mr. Hobby, we've got to clean the airbrush. Now, technically, I did this in between the black and white, but I wanted to leave it here at the end so you knew exactly what we were dealing with. So, we've got to clean the airbrush. Well, that means it's time for one more toxic thing. After our Mr. Hobby primer, we've got to clean the airbrush with lacquer thinner. So, this is the lacquer thinner that I use. Once again, as you're working with this stuff, please, 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 wear a mask, work in a well-ventilated area, have a fan running with a HEPA filter or whatever, like all of those things. Do, do all of that and more. Okay, so I do understand that this primer won't be good for everyone because of either strong smell sensitivities or because of the space you have or what you, who you share that space with. I'm lucky I've got it. If you are lucky, this is such a great primer to use. But we're going to take that lacquer thinner, we're going to dump it on in the cup, and we're going to just swish it around with an old brush. I keep several old beat-up synthetic brushes in my airbrush space. Whippy, whippy, wipey. You can see how the lacquer thinner just immediately strips all of that primer right off the sides of the airbrush cup. We dump it, put in a second amount, swishy, swishy, backflow, dump, one more time, dump. And then all I do, and, and we're clean. Like, I'm blowing more or less clean water at this point. Easy peasy. However, I do want to make sure all that's out of my airbrush. So I do then twice run just water through. So I got my squeezy bottle of water with a little bit of soap in it. Drop that in there. Uh, backflow a little. Dump it. Same thing. Dump it. Blow out any left. Good to go. If you want more full details on how I clean my airbrush, my cleaning airbrush fast video is linked up above. Go check that out. It has all the details on how I clean my airbrush generally when working with acrylic paints. But... And with that, it's ready for the next load of paint. As a matter of fact, really the five minutes or so of me waiting in between when I uh, showed you them in black and when I painted on the white was me just like cleaning up and putting the lacquer thinner away and all that kind of stuff, just like cleaning up my space. Um, but got these three primed up super quick. Mr. Hobby Primer, durable, uh, super thin, but absolutely tough, clean, little bit of satin, so it makes it easy to reflect and see, and toothy holds the layers of paint that go you put on top without issue. The downside, toxic, toxic, toxic. The primer, the uh, Mr. Color 400, the thinner, and obviously lacquer thinner, is all incredibly toxic. And that does pose a challenge, but I would absolutely recommend you give this a try if you've got the space, the ventilation, whatever, to do this. It is a very worthwhile product to pick up. I love this. It's been my go-to primer now for several months, and honestly, I can't imagine going back to any acrylic primer. My airbrush has not had any clogging problems or anything like that at all, because once you clean it out with that lacquer thinner, it is good as new. Uh, so there you go. That's Mr. Hobby 1500 Primer. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We've got new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions about this primer or priming in general I didn't answer, drop that down in the comments below. I always answer every question asked on the channel. If you want to support the channel, lots of ways you can do so. Everything I talked about in this video, including the Mr. Hobby, the little pipettes you need, everything else, all linked down below uh, with Amazon links. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but gives the channel a nice kickback. And in fact, all hobby products you might need, you can find affiliate links down there. Sometimes you'll even save some money, and it helps give the, it helps to give back to the channel. There's also, of course, our Patreon, focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. 
As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.